I had mentioned that the S, I broke it up into multiple pieces. So this is what my uh, finished S looks like. If I expand all the different objects that are in here, you can see that I have broken up the entire design into smaller pieces. So let me go and make this smaller here so we can actually see. The reason I did that is because let me turn off my 3D and let's zoom in on this S so that we can see the underlay stitching. These fatter areas needed heavier underlay. So when you choose this and go to your underlay setting, I had it set for a zigzag, which means that you have stitches in the underlay going underneath in both directions like lattice work. However, when you look at the areas in this section, the skinny parts, for example, down here where it connects, let's look at this part closer, you don't really want to have that crosshatch going in through this area because it gets too clumpy. Now, if you notice, the objects that I have are broken into sections. So this is one, then here's another one, and there's another option, uh, another set object, sorry. If you look at this one here, I haven't broken this part up yet. So this S is still, it has the fat section down to the skinny section. So how did I break this apart? I used my, I decided where did I need that underlay to change? Cause see, I don't need this heavy underlay in this really skinny section. So I'd like to break it right about this section right here. To do that, I double clicked to create a node cause I don't have a node there. And I double click here again to create another node, select both of them, right click and choose break across. Now this breaks the object into two so that you can see, okay, let's look at this. And now all the stitches are gone, but I can go through here and I can choose this object, set it to be my satin column. And under my underlay, I will make sure that this one has the zigzag stitching and I will select this object assign it to be a satin column, go to my underlay and verify that it's not the heavy underlay. Now I notice that I have a jump stitch here because the way that my design is stitching, let me zoom out, I may have to reorder my objects, let me look at this. Object one, two, three, four, five, but you notice my start and stop are in the wrong spot. So I'm just gonna move this guy over to this one, gets rid of that jump. Same thing with this one. This one has to start at the bottom and move up here to the top. There are also automated functions after I had done this in um, completely. If you go to the create menu, you can choose auto entry exit and that will fix all the starts and stops for you based upon the order of your stitches. But now when I, you run your sew simulator, you'll see that it's going to stitch the green in little sections with the proper underlay on each one so that you're not creating lumpy clumpies in your design. The other thing to pay attention to that I did is if you notice once it finishes this section here, I want it the way I want it to create this is similar to how you would digitize intertwined monograms. I want it to stitch from this point I now want it to go to the end here and stitch this section, this point, then this point, and then this curl, so that you have the underlay stitching or the overlay stitching or the intertwined backwards. If you turn your 3D on, you can see it better. This is how I wanted it to stitch. So in order for it to get from this object all the way up to this object, I needed to insert a traveling stitch. And that is done by simply creating a run that starts at this point, travels up to here, and now it will start and stop and do the loops as I want them to.